Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California, and today I'm going to do a Q&A on questions that were asked multiple times. And we'll kind of go over some of them, because some of them I think were pretty good, where a lot of people wanted to know the answer. I'm not going to pick a specific person on these sun goals because some people said, oh, they're patented and how are you growing them and they're hybrids. They are designer tomatoes and they are hybrids and they were designed to do whatever they're supposed to do. But I haven't bought sun goals for about two to three years. I got them at the nursery. I, plant, I bought one plant and I planted it and it, the tomatoes dropped and they grew more tomatoes the following year last year i had them all over the yard i had some in my chair garden and i had some on the deck growing and i had some even in my bird garden um maybe i moved them around because i found them somewhere now were they exactly like the mother plant have you really had a bad tomato i mean um they grew orange they grew like cherry tomatoes they grew the same so I can't say they were exactly the same. I'm sure the designer tomato is specifically designed to be something really, really special. And obviously, you know, when you replant it, sometimes they're not. But the point is tomatoes just want to grow. At the right time, you can't stop them. If I was going to count all the tomatoes on the property growing right now, the little seedlings, I probably have close to a million. They're everywhere. So what's fun is, yes, you can regrow them. I'm not selling any of the tomato seeds I've got or anything. It doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have something that's not as nice. Sometimes you have nicer. The brads, that's also one that's designed. That's a hybrid. The brads, great cherry tomatoes, the small ones. I bought that and planted them. And you know, I planted a few of the seeds that I purchased and Gary wasn't so crazy about them. A little tough on the skin. The taste was okay. I mean, like I said, all tomatoes to me are pretty good. I really haven't had a bad tomato unless it's been out there too long. But when they dropped and the seedlings came up and I had those all over, that has been Gary's favorite. So much of a favorite, he wants to plant some of them in his yard. They might have hybridized with some of my midnight snacks. They looked the same, but they tasted sweet. It was like picking them and eating grapes. So just because they're, they may not be exactly the same as what you bought, they might be better. So are they exactly the same as if I went and purchased um, seedlings in the store? They're probably not exactly the same because they will hybridize with all the other tomatoes I've got around. But let me tell you something, they're good. And so far, so good. They're coming up orange, the baby tomatoes that they throw or the tomatoes are orange. Little tip, I know a lot of you aren't growing yet because you can't grow until June. Whoa, we're cold today, we're in the 50s. Oh, here comes the sun, finally, I'm freezing. Grow as many tomatoes as you can, my suggestion would be. Grow the small ones if you can, because smaller, really, they mature much faster. You could be, I mean me, you could be waiting for a big tomato to grow and you may run out of your season in time to get that big tomato. But here, we would be waiting for a big tomato and be just as it's getting right and looking beautiful and we're ready to grab it some squirrel or somebody takes it because the cherry tomatoes are constantly coming it's a constant source of tomatoes and when you're waiting for a big tomato it seems like it takes longer because they've got to get bigger they've got to get ripe so I always my, I'm a big fan I always grow the smaller tomatoes I've tried a few of the bigger ones so I'm probably gonna grow some bigger ones this year again I grew some Goliaths that didn't grow last year but grew all summer go figure it on the wall behind you and they did really good but if you have a really short season, go for something small, something sweet, grow a lot of them, collect a lot of them as soon as they're ripe, wash them, dry them, put them on a cookie sheet. They're working on the house today. Put them on a cookie sheet, put them in the freezer, let them freeze like, like marbles, and then throw them in a big plastic bag and you will have tomatoes all winter. I'm still working on my tomatillos that I froze last winter. I take a bunch out, I make salsa out of it, Gary loves it. We're not growing any tomatillos yet. He likes the purple ones, but they sure do freeze nice. Now, are they going to slice up for a sandwich? They're going to be a little soft, not as nice as when you first picked them, but for soups or maybe even the chop up and put in a salad, salsas, anything you want that's perfect. So don't forget to freeze them. Let's see what else we've got here. There were a couple really good questions that I thought I may answer. Rose went ahead and she sliced some of her tomatoes and she buried them in a milk jug and she ended up with tons of them. Yes, you could take a tomato that's ripe, slice it up, lay the slices out on some soil, 
in a tote on the ground wherever that nothing's going to eat the seedlings cover them with a little bit of potting soil or a little bit of native soil and yes they will grow that's why i said tomatoes you can't stop them they grow in all my compost in place a lot of times i dump compost in a tote and i'm not quite ready to plant in it so i don't cover it and i end up with tomatoes all over the place and i'm composting them Jean is amazed that her compost is growing veggies. She had no idea what they were. Jean, those papayas back there? That's how I started the papayas. I was composting and the papayas were coming up and then I had a ton of little trees and I dragged some of them out there and that's how I ended up with papayas because they were in my compost. So yeah, a lot of stuff will grow in your compost. And if you want it, take it out. If you don't want it, it becomes your green manure, it becomes compost and composted in. See, when we compost and we compost in place, and that's sunny now, and things start to grow, that's because it's like pure nature soil. It just loves the breaking down matter and everything grows because it's alive. When you do hot composting and you're heating it up and you're cooking everything and killing everything, nothing's gonna grow in that. We're doing what's called cold composting and that's kind of more like mother nature. Hayden, uh, yeah, Hayden, a lot of people are trying to grow early and then they had a freeze. That's why I didn't plant so early this year. I mean, not that we freeze, but we can at times. I'm just waiting. But you know what? If you get a lot of things growing, you can start things outside. And if they make it, they make it. And if they don't, hopefully you've got a lot more in the house that you're ready to put outside. Laura Lee, I talked about that. She thought sun golds were patented and they're an F1. They, I, I don't know if they're patented. They might be. But the point is, these are coming up from the tomatoes that grew in my yard, and I'm just replanting them, and they may not be exactly the same, but I'm happy with them. I love seeing bright orange tomatoes, and they taste so good, and they freeze beautiful. SJR said, I guess if you bought organic strawberries, you could smear them in the dirt and get strawberry plants or crushed blueberries. You can grow strawberry seeds, but they're really difficult. And go ahead, Google it, look it up. But to me, it's not worth it. And I like buying the uh, bare root ones. That's what I've been buying. They're doing really good. I've got some strawberry plants that are older. They've been in my yard for a couple years. And they're slower, actually, to grow strawberries because a lot of people say you want new, young stock. But as far as growing the seeds, it would take a while and you really have to work with them and not all of the seeds on the strawberries are going to germinate so you'd be putting a lot of effort into something when you can buy the plant but it probably will work it's worth a try if you want to do it lisa Horing, she went for a walk with her dog and she's starting to find herself collecting bits and pieces of things to put in her totes she's got a cloth bag now and her neighbors think she's nuts she's saving money on soil that is the best thing just just think if you had to go fill up all these containers or raised beds soil when you buy it is expensive and the plant generally in the beginning is not using all of that on the bottom so if you're throwing matter in there whether it's wood or leaves or whatever which is going to break down and make you soil it's using the top but at the same time it's breaking down so by the time it gets down there you've got all the microbes and everything working down there you have fantastic soil. you have better soil than if you dumped a full bag in there but if you can't get it Definitely do it whatever way works for you. Use toilet paper rolls down there, whatever you want to put. If you're going to use cardboard, cut it up. I would cut it up. Don't use full sheets. It takes longer to break down. So kind of cut up the cardboard and put it in there with your t toilet paper rolls. And then on the top, about good four to six inches on the top, that's where you put your potting soil. I'll be honest, sometimes I only put two inches and it works too. Oh, Roxy, hubby and I having a garden contest. I'm using totes and he's in the ground. Hope I win. That sounds like us, but we weren't having a contest. Gary decided it was easier to plant in the ground and I tried the ground. I, I didn't have a lot of success with the ground. So I started doing more containers. I do have plants in the ground. You know, I've got purple tree colors and different things in the ground and I've got uh, garlic chives in the ground. The problem is we have gophers up here. We have a lot of critters up here that will get into things and even the soil isn't that great. So we would have to really dig a lot of stuff into the soil and fix it up in order to grow good. Well, long story short, 
I don't know how many totes. I should make a count one day on how many totes that I'm setting up more and I'm going to work here and set up more all through here. I was the one growing in totes. I started going to the thrift store and picking up totes. Gary swore he wouldn't. Now he's got a yard full of totes and he's finding that he's doing better with the totes than he was in the ground. So Roxy, I think you're going to win. <laughs> See, Judy is, she bought three tubs and she's got leaves and grass and cardboard and all kinds of stuff in there and I hope you got a little bit of soil in there and she's growing potatoes you will grow potatoes I know you said you just had a cold spell I don't think it's going to bother the potatoes too much but I just peeked I kind of brushed the soil and I see I have got a whole bunch of potatoes that I grew just a few months ago now in a tote you should do really really well I'm sure they'll be fine Michelle Olson she wants to see some more cooking videos you know, I've got some cooking videos I haven't even put together. I made a banana cake. <laughs> and I did the video and I haven't put it together yet. I really, really am trying to figure out how to do this. I'm getting used to this. I mean, this was the first thing I had to get used to. I mean, think about it. When we started a few years ago, all the videos, real quick, it wasn't, for, it wasn't anything like to talk to you guys. It was actually the videos were up there so Gary's family would see how he's doing. And... It evolved. All of a sudden, I had all these people coming in asking, well, how'd you do this? Or what'd you do here? And it, and it, it turned into this. It was never planned. So I have to work into getting the cooking right because I don't want to bore you. I mean, I'm actually thinking it'd be easier for me to just go in the kitchen, turn on the camera and say, this is what I'm cooking today. Follow me and do the best you can and write notes and then shorten it down. Because I'm trying to figure out how to present myself because here's the problem. I go into the kitchen almost every night and I have no idea what I'm going to make. Gary never knows what he's going to get. And you know what? He has never complained yet. Uh, I may tell him I'm going to make chicken tonight and I go in the freezer. I find fish. I pull out some fish and I cook fish. You may end up getting big tuna patties. He might end up getting something with squash if I come out to the garden last minute. I, they're really building today. I should have done it yesterday. They weren't building. I never, never know. I'm going to have to probably call this quits. I never, never know what I'm going to make. So I am trying to work out how to do this. I'd like to keep it as short as possible because more, more people have an interest. Or maybe do a really short one for somebody that wants to learn how to make my fantastic gluten-free pizza. Um, and then make a long one so I can sit and talk about all the different things that I do. So I'm working on it. I am really working on it. Oh, okay. Somebody said, oh, chair garden. I was wondering where the cherry tree were. She thought it was saying cherry tree? Chair garden. I love my chair garden. Started with that one, and now it's gone into here, and I'm going to put some in the bird garden as well. There's nothing better than that. I mean, it's off the ground. Don't have to worry about gophers. Very rarely will a squirrel even look at it. They don't care. The rabbits can't get into it. And I now make these covers so I can get my seedlings to grow so nothing touches it. And we're going to make the covers together. I know so many of you have snow, and we're and I'm complaining over 50 something degrees today. There's been a few of you, there's too many to go through, that started growing, and one lady gave up completely. She said because of the squirrel. She started planting in containers, and she said I think she had her containers on the ground, and the squirrels got in there and took everything. She never said she tried tool. T-U-L-L-E. You know, you get an entire bolt. That's what they call a big spool of fabric bolts. The whole bolt is 40 yards. Not 40 feet. 40 yards. And it's like 50-something inches wide. It is so big that when you buy one bolt, it should last you all season. I am making all kinds of covers. This, I've talked about this so much, and it's really so important and worth a try little tiny animals that have little nails like your rabbits your rats your mice your squirrels they don't like to touch it because they get their nail in there they can't hurt them so if any of you are going oh my gosh they're gonna no they can't hurt them but when they touch the fabric their nails sharp and because it's sharp so they can climb and when they touch it it sticks see it pulls i've got a video somewhere of a rabbit touching it and i can't find the video where he touched it and he flung back it was like oh my gosh it was like he flung four feet back when they touch it their nail gets stuck like if you took a pin and you touched it and you can pull on it and that scares them so they don't want to deal with it 
if they were smart and smarter than us, they would just chew it and make a hole and go through it. Very rarely do they do that. They touch it and then they leave and they just go someplace else. It is so worth trying to put tool on. I'm putting tool on a lot of containers and areas and even small cottage cheese containers or yogurt containers. You can put tool on it. I'll show you how to do it where you can sit the plant, um, the tool on top of the plant with a little container until it gets some size. A lot of critters don't eat the plant once it has its adult mature leaves. You know, the, the larger leaves, they like the new first two leaves that come up. It tastes better. So if you protect it until you get a little size, you're generally on your way. As far as your fruit or your vegetables, you can wrap that. And I've got a lot of videos on that. You can wrap it on the tree. You can cover things here. If I, when I want to save the lettuce, you probably can't see the lettuce that's over there. I want to save the seeds on there. I'm going to just drape tool on it and just with a little string or a clothespin. I'm going to drape it over there once the time is right. And I'm going to save those seeds because I want them. If I don't put tool on it, the birds will come and eat the seed. It's really worth it to put $10 out. I'll put the link underneath. These are the people I buy from. And they have sold out of all the colors that I buy. Every time I mention the color, they sell out. Uh, it doesn't matter what color. I've actually been starting to use black. I used a lot of different greens. Now I use black. If you use black in the garden, it kind of disappears. If you use green in the garden, it really doesn't show a lot unless it's a different green. Gary likes using red because he wants to know where he put the tool. So color doesn't matter as far as the plant, saving the plant. But it is worth it to at least try it once, $10.00. Split it with a neighbor or a friend if they want to try it. So each costs you $5. And go ahead and try it because it's worth it. It's, it has been a lifesaver for me. And I know that Gary didn't want to use it. And he's using it too periodically on his plants. Teresa, she wants to know, hi, she loves listening to me. My question is a zucchini plant with a cluster of zucchinis on it. What is the long core thing that goes from the plant to the tote? Oh, how funny. I guess I didn't bring it up. She knows, like we all know, who grow a lot of zucchini, that zucchini do not trail. Like spaghetti squash, take off, they vine. They take off. But zucchini normally grows like a big bush. Well, what zucchini does do, though, and I don't have anything to show. Let's use this spoon here. I've been working in the garden. Zucchini, it comes up, and then they grow flowers and leaves, right? Well then, once they grow there, they don't regrow again, so they get a little longer. So the tip grows longer and they grow more flowers and leaves and a little bit more, more flowers and leaves. Well, normally we start, let's say in late spring, we grow our squash until let's say fall. By then you've got a trunk about so high, you've gotten lots of squash off of it, the plant dies back and it gets composted and forgotten. Well, the zucchini that I've got against the wall, which is behind you, that zucchini is over a year old. It's from last year. It's one of my very first zucchinis. So it's continued to do the process of growing leaves, growing flowers, growing leaves. So it ended up to be, ooh, I'm looking at it now, probably about four feet long. So it's not that it's vining because a vining plant, the stem grows and keeps going and it could go 20, 30 feet, some of these things. I've heard them climbing on buildings and everything, but it's not vining. I call it unwinding, which it's not really doing either. It's just getting new growth to continue to grow. And so it grows more and more, but only can grow from the top. Once this is grown, it's hardened off. It's still feeding the plant because the inside, like a tree, is bringing the water and the food to the top of the plant. And it just keeps going and going and going and going. And of course, it doesn't go straight up because it's heavy. So it falls on the ground and it just keeps going. I've had them, geez, 10 feet if they're really old and producing a lot. The more fruit they produce, the more they'll get longer because they need new growth to produce new leaves and new fruit. So that's what that long cord is. That's a great question. The cord is the actual stem of the zucchini, but it's not a vining plant, yet it looks like it's vining, but it's not because it's just, it's old. Normally it would be a long taken out, but it's just continuing to grow. And as long as the stem doesn't get totally damaged, it could look really bad. Some of them even have had cuts in them. As long as the center can still bring food and water to the tip of the plant, the very tip, it will continue to produce until I pull it out or something happens to it and dies. Generally something happens to the roots, 
something happens to the stem down here, and once the stem gets severed or dries out, it can't pass any more water, think of a straw, to the bait to the top of the plant, then that's when the plant will die out. I am going to compost it soon. I know some of you probably want to see how long it will grow, but I want to compost it. The only reason it is really growing so well is because I have a two system in there where I've got a bucket in there full of holes on the bottom that I put scraps inside and I water the inside of the bucket. I always water the inside. So as I'm throwing scraps from around the yard, kitchen scraps or whatever, and there's holes all around the, the bucket inside the tote, when you water this, the water leaches out and then it feeds the plant in the tote. And so it's getting so much nutrition that the plant is just surviving even though the plant should have been long gone. It's like somebody that's 110 years old, it is still surviving because it still has all the nutrition to grow. I think I've gone over a lot of good ones and I shouldn't say good ones, they're all good. But there's just, you know, what size tote? Debbie wants to know. I use all size totes, Debbie. I've got 18 gallons. The ones I've been picking up this year have been 18 gallons. They're like five, six dollars at Walmart. You can get them at Target, Lowell's, Home Depot, some grocery stores sell them. I sell them at Aldi's. You can find them all over the place. So look and see who's got them. I like to get them to have a little bit of flex to them. If you tap on them and they're really hard plastic and you don't find too many of those, but if you do, they don't last as long. The ones that have a little bit of flex, they last for years. I've got some in the garden that are probably five years old and still going strong. Nadine, hello. Um, like I said, there's, you have to bear with me because there are hundreds and hundreds of questions just in the past few days. I know other people, Pat, she's got a rainbow garden. I, I think it's fun. But you know, if you don't want a lot of color, go gray. Put them on the ground. Make a line. Put them on the ground. Make a keyhole. You can put them on. If you don't have any problems, put them on the ground. Gophers can't get into them if they're on the ground, so you're still okay. But your rabbits can if you've got rabbits. And I've got a ton of rabbits. So, you know, you put them what works for you. And somebody did ask me. I'm not sure where the question is. They wanted to see if I had a video on how I tooled up my Goliath tomato. I didn't make a video on it. I don't think I did. You know, I'm going to be honest. There's a lot of times I set the camera up and I just work and then I file it away and I forget. If I've got it, I will put it up. If not, I will do another one because I'm going to use a lot of that method of the tool around it. And there'll be other things I'm going to do very soon. Today I'm going to work a little bit in here. Um, I'm going to work in the next few days in my chair garden. That's the gray totes one. And I'm going to show you how I am going to set up totes with used soil that some people say you throw away. Don't throw away the soil. I'm going to redo those. And remember that soil in there, everything you put in there is broke down now. Pretty much everything. You can use that in flower pots and different things. But I'm going to leave them and I'll show you how we get to that. Pat is trying by putting things closer together. Oh, I think she means planting her garden closer together. If you plant your garden closer together, and you have less maintenance for it, and you can come out here and water everything, walk through it quickly, even harvest closer together. You save time, and I have found that people that save time end up making it permanent. If you have to come out here, and I've talked about this, water things that are all over the place, and you're running around, and you're worn out by the time you're done, that's when it becomes a chore, and you won't make it permanent. I just want you to make it permanent. Uh, Wish Cloud Studios, the totes have gone up a dollar. I know. They were $5 last year, and they're $6 this year. You know what? A lot of things have gone up, though. For instance, Gary went to the hardware store the other day. He needed some 2 by 4s that he just bought not long ago, and he was flabbergasted at how much wood went up. He said it was it more than doubled. So a lot of things are, go up. But you know what? $6 for a tote, an 18-gallon. Now, you can go bigger. A lot of people want to go bigger, and you can get them 30 gallons. And you know what? The 30 gallons are only $10. I bought some really nice 30-gallon ones, actually 27-gallon ones, the black ones. You have probably saw it on the other video. I'm going to do the vertical garden in that. They had those on sale for $10, and those are heavy-duty. You can stack those really easy. They're made for weight, but $6 for a tote. And you think that's too much? Some people want to plant in something you got for free that's going to fall apart, but $6 for a tote? How much is toilet paper? And what are you doing with that money after you're buying a big package of toilet paper? You're literally flushing that down. 
This you're going to have for years. I don't think $6 I can complain about. When you get a raised bed, and I know people that buy the raised beds that are on legs, they generally are equivalent to three 18-gallon totes, maybe four. And so that would be, let's say, 20 20 something dollars. Those raised beds are 100 to $150. And, you know, that's fine if you want to put that kind of money out. That is absolutely fine. They're beautiful. I have no qualms on them. They'll do the thing. The only thing is, I've noticed a lot of the raised beds are not as deep as the 18 gallon totes, number one. And number two, soil is expensive. If you're not making your own soil, you have to do the whole bed. So if you decided today, like I'm gonna work back here and I'm gonna do one thing at a time. You decide to go out there and you just wanna to plant tomatoes today. You gotta to do the whole bed because when you're watering it, you're taking care of the whole thing. So you have to do the whole thing. So if it's a big, long thing, six feet, eight feet long, you've gotta fill the whole thing. And your soil, if you don't have all the soil from around your yard, you're not gathering a lot, it could cost you over $100 to fill. These things, I collect a lot of stuff. I don't, I think it costs me more when I even buy the soil, um, maybe $2 because I only use a little bit of soil for the top because I'm using everything else from around the yard. But if you use an entire bag of soil on sale, depending on what, you know, how much soil, you, you're still saving because you only have to take care of one. You don't have to do everything. I can't plant half a tote. There's a good example. I have to plant the whole tote. Well, the same thing with the six foot beds. You have to plant the whole six foot bed, not necessarily with plants, but you gotta get your soil in there because it's, you know, you're gonna water it. It's gonna run out of what? You're only gonna fill part. So you have to think about what's gonna work best for you. And for me, the 18 gallons work best. Though I've got a lot that are 30 gallons because I bought them at the thrift store. I have The only new ones I bought were the ones, the black ones that were on sale this year for $10. I think they're still on sale at Walmart for $10. I really like those and I bought some of those. I think Gary got a couple of those and those are 27 gallons, heavy duty. You can stack those. And so it might cost a little bit more to fill a tote, but an 18 gallon tote, you can grow a tomato plant with some other plants in there, smaller plants. You can put some parsley in there, lettuce, mustard, whatever little plants you want to grow, some radishes in there. I wouldn't put a tomato and a zucchini because they're going to fight, so one's going to win, but you still will end up with some tomatoes and a zucchini. Really, I have found that one zucchini plant, one big squash plant per 18 gallon is probably enough, though I do have done two without a problem. And I know my daughter's done more without a problem, but you have to really feed it. But that means just feeding it rotten leaves from your garden and you'll feed it. We're gonna get into more of that. You make your own plant food and feed it and it will keep going. So my, my, my favorite choice is 18 gallon totes. They're cheap. I can do one tote at a time and I can think about how I wanna set it up. I just like them. That's my per personal preference. You do what, what you like best. Oh, Sarah wants to know, when you plant the sun gold tomatoes, from, I, we talked about this, do they actually grow sun gold? I don't know. They grow orange, small orange cherry tomatoes that taste fabulous, grow fantastic. Are they exactly like the mother plant? Probably not since it's a hybrid, but it works. And it's good enough for me right now. Journey to the other side. She just filled two 4x4 four four raised beds, and she used all kinds of stuff on the bottom. I guess some cardboard and toilet paper rolls and shredded paper and she collected leaves and everything and she said wow she couldn't believe how much money she saved on soil oh yeah that, that is fantastic she topped it with uh, garden soil and chicken manure and uh, I know it will settle and go down a bit but you know yes it's perfect you put plant matter of any type cardboard use toilet paper rolls that's plant matter it will break down the microbes love it that's the main thing it's like you're going well, why would they eat cardboard well cardboard was once a tree and what it's doing is it's going back to being basically like a tree so the microbes eat that your microbes eat it your earthworms so all your critters you need do break down all that and that's why you put that on the bottom it's all about saving money you don't want to save money you got all the money you need you you can we want to order organic you want to order whatever order what you want i'm going to tell you right now i generally buy 
the best price, I'm trying to word this right, the best price potting soil, you know, I do sometimes get garden soil, but the best price potting soil on sale. That's generally what I do because I'm using really such a small amount on the top. And with all the microbes and earthworms and everything getting in there and working it, the soil on the bottom, which is what, is I only put a little bit on top. That's just so full of nutrition for the plants that as soon as they start to grow, they just take off down there and it doesn't matter what's on the top. The top is just to get them started and then everything works together as a team and it's just fantastic. So I myself go for the best price potting soil. Potting soil versus garden soil, I have mixed it. Garden soil doesn't have what holds water. Potting soil is designed to be a little lighter. It has matter in there that holds water. I'm trying to think how to word this so you understand it because uh, I don't even understand it half the time. No, it's just that it holds water better and it's designed to hold water because it's in a small pot. They're thinking something so you want to hold water. Where garden soil, it's getting the water from underneath, the roots are sending in, so there's nothing in there to hold water. It's basically, read it, it's basically leaf matter, wood, you know, wood chips that have been rotted down. There's nothing in it. It doesn't have any dirt. It doesn't have any soil. It basically is the same thing that's already that you're putting in there, but just broke down. So you can mix it. Um, so I, I got real cheap once and I mixed it. It works fine. I got a big bag of garden soil. I think they had that on sale for $8 once. And then I got potting soil. I mixed it and used that on the top and it worked for me. So you try and see whatever works for you. Choma Charn, I'm probably really butchering that name. C-H-I-O-M-A, Pashvias Charm. She was laughing because they said, no, I'm not going to live here. And they looked like they were screaming. I always feel that way when I'm pulling out a plant that I don't want. <laughs> oh, well, but, you know, I really don't like composting plants, especially when I know what they're tomatoes. You just think about it and get a whole cluster. And even though they came out of the tomato they're, and they're hybrids because they're coming from the yard, that one could be the perfect tomato, be a winner. But you know, what are you going to do? I, I, that toad is loaded. So they're loaded, with, they're everywhere. So there's nothing I can do but just, you know, hope for the best. And I, I, I know it bothers me when I pull them out, but oh well, what are you going to do? I think that's pretty much it for those two videos, Phoenix Wars. She liked that I spoke to a man in Spanish for about 20 minutes and neither one of us knew how to speak. I couldn't speak Spanish, he couldn't speak English. That was on the papayas. He, I was determined to find out how he grew in the city these massive papaya trees, which he now has to wrap in wire because people are trying to pick them. I said to him once, is that for rodents? And he said to me, for, for mice, for rats? And he goes, no, people. So he now wraps them in wire. But um, yeah, I went and talked to him because his papayas were beautiful and that's when he told me well i think he told me no he, he was explaining he was trying to show me and tell me about flowers and i understood he was talking about the leaves and stuff he puts everything on the bottom that was that's in another video when you're determined you're going to talk to anybody <laughs> so yes i i'm excited i talked to him because i learned a lot even though i couldn't understand him his mannerism and listening to him even though it's a different language, you start to understand and you get enough from it and it worked out perfect. Can't complain. I've got a lot of papayas everywhere. Marie Ann uh, Rapp, yeah, she asked about how many plants you can grow in a tote, like watermelon plants, squash. I just talked about that too. For an 18 gallon tote, I would say the best would be one plant. Here's the problem with one plant. Something could happen to it and then you have nothing. So I, I have two down there and one in another one. And when you have two plants, they don't get sometimes as big. We have one plant, it gets bigger. I wouldn't go more than two. Uh, you could always grow two and take one out or just feed the dickens out of it by rotting leaves, make a compost tea as it's growing and it will do good. Watermelon, one watermelon, but you can put other plants in there that are on the smaller side. You can grow some parsley in there. Though parsley I know can get a good root system. They don't really are too bad with other plants. You can grow lettuce and mustard and maybe some Swiss chard. Keep it small. You could put onions, walking onions. That's one of my favorite. You can put a lot of different things in. Walking onions. You, you know what? That's something. Somebody asked me about that the other day. 
walking onions everywhere are just starting to walk. They're just starting to have the babies. So right now they're going to be high. Give it another month or two and you should be able to find them online. Walking onions don't really get into the nursery because nurseries tend to grow things that have seeds. So they can, they can grow them and have trays and trays and trays of them and get them from the, you know, the growers. But walking onions... I've talked to us like guppies, so you don't know how many you're going to get. You can't get as many, and I think that's why you never find them in nurseries. I have never found them, maybe a specialty nursery, but you really don't find them in nurseries because of the way they reproduce. That's the reason. I think most of the stuff that's in our stores come from seed, and you have more control over how many seeds you want to plant over knowing what's going to grow out of a walking onion. But the walking onion, that's why you find a lot of bunching onions and white onions because they're grown from seeds. The walking onions, each plant could throw no babies, two babies, they could throw dozens of babies. So they grow different. But boy, once you've got them, you've got them for life if you take care of them just a little bit. All right, I think we're going to end this right now because of all the hammering. And I'll try this again another day. And it's cold. See, the sun came out and disappeared. It's freezing out here. It's freezing. It's like 58 degrees. You're all laughing at me. We're in the snow. We're rolling in the snow and you're complaining. Yeah, I know. Born and raised in Southern California. I don't use an air conditioner. I happen to like the warm weather, but I don't like the cold weather. So I'm going to end this for today. I hope I answered some questions and i'll get something up on the tool because i really want to really push people that are having problems with tool you know i should say i really want to push people that are having problems with critters to try tool at least once and don't cover everything i've had some people come back to me and say this is so fantastic i'm doing my whole yard don't cover everything cover your prized possessions in fact if you have to leave a tote on the bottom or, or a flower pot on the bottom with some sacrificial plants in there, because what you want them to do is touch it, be scared, leave, and go to something else. If you force something and you make them desperate because they need the food, then they will learn quickly that that's nothing to be afraid of. And so far, they're pretty still much afraid of it here, so it works fantastic. With that, have a wonderful day. I want to get working in my rainbow garden. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. So many questions. But I'm going to do one on hummingbirds.